If you've ever watched an episode of DP Shop Talk and thought, how does he keep his shop so clean? Then stick around and check out my small shop dust collection solutions. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the dust collection setup that I use in my shop. Now I've had a lot of comments from people saying how clean my shop always looks and wanting to see an episode on my dust collection setup. So I thought it's about time to do one. Now wood dust is a real health concern and it's also time consuming to clean up. So the more of it you can collect at the source, the better off you are. So at 19 by 23, my shop is a relatively small space, basically a double car garage. So I'll go through both the stationary setup that I use as well as the portable setups and show you how they all work together to, uh, to keep my shop nice and clean. So hopefully you'll be able to, uh, to take some of the things that I show you and apply them to your own shop to get some great dust collection. Now for my stationary dust collection, I use a basic one horsepower collector hooked up to an Onita Super Dust Deputy. So this gets used for any stationary tools that take a four inch dust port, like the table saw or my thickness planer. I do have an eight inch jointer, but I don't have it set up yet in this shop since I haven't had a lot of need for it lately. But in the past, I've used this setup with that as well. So basically anything that creates a lot of volume and a lot of dust and chips. Now there's nothing special about the dust collector itself, but what I've done is installed a pleated canister filter on the top and then replaced the typical clear plastic bag on the bottom with a felt filter bag. So what this does is it maximizes the airflow by maximizing the filter area. Now the reason that I'm able to get away with using the felt filter bag on the bottom rather than the usual plastic bag is the Onita Dust Deputy that separates out the vast majority of the dust, both the fine and the coarse. So really you don't get any dust uh, or very, very little dust reaching the dust collector. So this bag never fills up, it just it stays as, as a filter. So it really helps maximize the performance of the unit. So that's really a cost effective way to get the most out of uh, your small dust collector unit. Now, as you may notice, it's sitting on a Rubbermaid uh, container. I got some storage in there, some stuff stashed in there. Uh, at some point, I wanna build an actual cabinet underneath, raise the dust collector up, and make more use of that space underneath. Uh, so when I get around to doing that project, that'll be another episode as well. So as I just mentioned, it's an Onita Super Dust Deputy that I use for the cyclone separator and it, uh, it cuts out the vast majority of dust from ever reaching the dust collector, which is key because it keeps your filters clean. When your filters get clogged up with dust, you lose your suction power, and so you lose your ability to have efficient dust collection where you're trying to collect it at the source, whatever tool you're using. I used to just use the dust collector by itself, but I got tired of the filters always being clogged and having to waste time cleaning them all the time, so I added the cyclone separator and it made a world of difference. Now I just have it mounted to a simple shop made lid which sits on top of a metal can and uh, so that just, just sits there by gravity. I have a, a foam uh, seal underneath there just to, uh, to help make a better seal, just a piece of pipe insulation. And then I use a clear plastic bag, just a contractor's uh, clear plastic bag to sit inside of the can so that makes it easy to lift it out and dispose of the dust when it gets full. Now a side note about using a bag underneath a cyclone separator like this, you need something inside to keep the form of the bag uh, open, otherwise the vacuum uh, that's created inside will actually suck the bag up into the cyclone and it just doesn't work. So I've just created a simple uh, wire frame out of some plastic coated uh, wire and uh, so that just keeps the shape of the bag. I lift that out before I, I empty the bag and then the bag can go out in, in the garbage. So now that you know what's behind the four inch hose to power it, I'll explain how I use it. So I've never found the need in any of my smaller shop spaces to set up a full central dust collection system with ductwork. 
Now I have set up uh, central systems in the past for different shops that I've worked for, but I've never found the need in any of my own shops since they're usually smaller spaces. So what I do is set up uh, the machines that need 4-inch dust collection uh, close to the dust collector or at least make them easily portable. So in this case I have the table saw uh, set up right next to the dust collector since it gets by far the most use. Now if I need to use my portable thickness planer then I can just bring it over uh, quite easily, set it up by the table saw and then take the hose uh, out from underneath the table saw and plug it into the thickness planer. Same goes if I set up my uh, uh, my 8 inch jointer in here at some point. It's on a mobile base so I can easily wheel it over and plug it in. I don't work with solid wood as much as I used to uh, since it's mostly custom cabinets that I do now so the table saw by far gets the most use out of all my uh, 4 inch dust collection machines uh, so it stays plugged into the dust collector pretty much all the time. So for portable collectors in the shop, I use both a Bosch 9 gallon dust extractor as well as a shop vac hooked up to a smaller dust deputy. So these are both easily portable around the shop so they can be moved to where I'm working or whatever tool I happen to be working with. Now these are also what I use on site when I'm working on a job site to keep things clean where I'm working there as well. Now, when I mentioned that I've never found the need to set up a, a full central dust collection system in the smaller shop spaces that I've had, this is why. These collectors can be moved around to, to individual machines that take a smaller dust port uh, that the, uh, the main 4-inch dust collector won't reach. So that's what makes that possible. So the Bosch gets used with all my portable power tools like sanders, routers, saws, etc. Anything with that smaller dust port on it. Now it also gets used for some of my larger tools like my miter saw or my band saw because they have smaller diameter dust ports on them as well. Now I won't go into details on the Bosch extractor because I've done a full video review of it already uh, just explaining how it works and why I like it and uh, and the pros and cons of it. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out as well. Now anytime I use the dust extractor with a portable power tool like a sander, I use my dust hose arm accessory on my MPT or multi-purpose table. And what that does is it takes the weight off the hose so I can easily move around anywhere that I need to, whether I'm sanding or sawing, routing, whatever I'm doing, and there's no interference from the dust hose or the power cord. Now if you'd like to learn more about the MPT and the dust hose arm, click on the link above and that will take you over to the MPT page on my website. Now the other place that the Bosch extractor gets used in my shop is at the table saw. Now the overarm dust collector gets hooked to the Bosch extractor and then the, uh, the stationary dust collector with the 4 inch hose that I showed you earlier, that gets hooked to the bottom of the table saw. So by using two separate dust collection machines, it maximizes the suction power that I get which maximizes the dust collection efficiency. Now if you haven't seen the video on four different table saw dust collection upgrades as well as how to build the overarm collector, make sure you check those out as well. So for my shop vac setup, it's just a regular old shop vac, nothing special. The only thing I've done to it is installed uh, one of the canister HEPA filters uh, just for some better filtration, but other than that, it's just a regular shop vac. Now the dust deputy is the kit that you can get, which comes with the two buckets, the lid, the cyclone, the wheel kit, as well as the hose to connect it to the vacuum. Now the way that I've attached them together is I've created these two wooden blocks with uh, the curve of the vacuum and the curve of the dust deputy bucket in them and then put a screw through into the wooden blocks uh, through the outer uh, bucket of the dust deputy so that holds them in place and then the two, uh, the vacuum and the dust deputy get held together with this ratcheting tie down strap. So it holds, holds them securely together, but if I need to separate them for any reason, it's really quick and easy to do. Now, just like the big dust deputy that I use on my stationary collector, uh, this works just the same. The dust comes in uh, the hose from whatever tool you're using, 
and then it swirls around inside of, of the, uh, the cyclone and drops into the bucket and then it's mostly clean air that goes onto the vacuum so again it keeps your filter clean. And just to show you an example here's a picture of uh, the vacuum just after I got the dust deputy. Now I sucked up an entire bucket full of dust and you can see just how little actually makes it into the vacuum. So it really increases the uh, collection efficiency. Now the two tools that get used the most with the shop vac and dust deputy setup are the router table and my portable table saw. And this is because they have a larger two and a quarter inch diameter dust port on them which works well with the larger hose that I have hooked up to the dust deputy and they generally produce larger volumes of dust as far as more portable power tools go. So the dust deputy works well with the larger volumes because it separates that out into the bucket and it's easy to dump the bucket when it gets full. Now, I also use the shop vac and dust deputy set up on site sometimes to do a dirtier cleanup jobs like drywall dust or, or things that are hard on vacuums and, and kind of make a mess since that cyclone separates it out and keeps it from reaching the vacuum. Now, out of the two systems, the Bosch and the shop vac, I use the Bosch more just because it's quieter, it's more powerful, and it's a little less cumbersome to move around since it's, it's more compact. So that gets, uh, gets used most of the time, but I still like having the, uh, the shop vac and dust deputy set up for the applications that I've mentioned. <clears throat> now, you might be wondering why I don't use the Cyclone system with the Bosch vacuum, and that's for two reasons. One is it uh, uh, adds more bulk to it, so it's a little harder to move around, especially if I'm taking it to site. And two, I use a reusable fleece bag in the Bosch extractor, which kind of pre-filters the dust and keeps it from getting to the main uh, vacuum filter. So I haven't really found as much need with that particular Bosch vacuum to use a cyclone separator. Now usually I'll use the Bosch vacuum as well for general shop cleanup. So if I'm going around and, and vacuuming up any dust that, uh, that the dust collection missed, then that's generally what I'll use as well. So the final component to my dust collection system is this ambient air cleaner which hangs from the ceiling. Now it helps to capture any airborne dust that uh, escaped or didn't get collected from the dust collectors. Now I usually run it anytime that I'm doing something that creates dust and I also let it run for a little bit after I'm done just to get anything that's left in the air. Now it has a two-stage filter system inside so the air is drawn in the opposite end and then the clean air is exhausted out of this end. And so I've, I've kind of hung it on one side of the shop so that it creates sort of a, a circular airflow around the shop so that it's really effective at, at getting that dust. Now it's got uh, three speeds and uh, it also has a timer feature which is handy since I can let it run for however long I want after I leave the shop just to get any dust that's left in the air. So it helps uh, keep dust from settling on surfaces and helps generally keep the shop clean. So the dust collection machines that you use are really only part of the equation. You need to have good dust collection ports and shrouds built into the power tools that you connect them to to really get good efficient dust collection. Now a lot of the newer tools that have come out have great dust collection features built into them. Some of them don't and some of them leave a little bit to be desired. And then there's also older power tools that just don't have dust collection built in at all. So that's why I've come up with several different dust collection focused jigs like the dustless jigsaw table or the circular saw crosscut jig or the uh, table saw overarm dust collector that I made for my table saw. Jigs like these really help uh, improve the dust collection efficiency and make it uh, function at its best to make for a cleaner, healthier shop space or job site. Now, if you'd like to see more information about my dust collection setup, jump over to my website at danpattison.com and you can check out the blog article that goes along with this video. Now, in addition to written content and photos, there's also links to some of the dust collection machines and accessories that I've shown, what I've found that works well in my shop. Now, if you enjoy the DP Shop Talk channel and you find it helpful and would like to help support it, please consider using any of my Amazon affiliate links over on my website. Now you can find these on any of the blog articles or the DP toolbox. 
So whether you buy the tool that the link is for or any other item on Amazon, as long as you get to Amazon through one of those links, then Amazon gives me a small commission from all of the uh, purchases that are made. So that goes to help support the DP Shop Talk channel and helps me bring you guys more content. So any use of those links is very much appreciated. So I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, make sure you leave your ideas, thoughts, and questions in the comments below. Let's get some shop talk going about dust collection. Let me know what works for you, what you use in your shop, and uh, we can share some ideas with each other. So thanks for watching, and until next time, let's talk shop. Mm -hmm.